Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirusha here. Now, I do believe I understand what's been happening with my microphone, so I'm going to be trying to record this, and well, if it is not that, if you guys are currently listening to this right now, that means that this may have been solved. But do understand that this microphone I thought that it was something different, and now after looking at it more, I found out exactly why it's doing what it does. So, let us begin. Whenever we last left off, Midoriya had just had an encounter with the multiverse, where he met about, I believe, eight or seven different versions of himself along with Rewind Deku, being one of them. And, well, he was handed over a vial, and told to only use a few drops of it in case of absolute emergency. Now, he was told that because of what's in the vial. Something very, very helpful. Now, he just got done with his date with Kendo, and the next day, the two would begin to train. These two working more on their own quirks. Kendo enlarging and delarging her hands, along with trying to focus more on her body. Trying to improve upon herself. And Midoriya, he would be doing the same thing. As let us cut to about two weeks later. Now. Alrighty now, I'm going to try and record this again. It has been roughly about six hours, and this cut really doesn't prove anything. So, yeah. I've been waiting for it to quiet down. It hasn't. And I'm tired of that. So I'm just going to record. Now, with that being said, over the next two weeks, they would be training. Midoriya teaching her some techniques he does know, and which would probably better suit, be better suited for her quirk. Now, with that being said, let us cut over to the sports festival. Now, Midoriya, he would be told to walk on stage, and to give a speech. Him saying this. Why, hello, everyone. Now, as many of you may know, I am the top student in UA. I score the highest in destroying robots. Yeah, that's fine and good. But also, as you just bring his hand up, black whip flowing from it, and moving upwards in the air. Him saying that he also discovered that he has another quirk. His mom actually surprised in the stands, basically shouting for that her baby is going to win. Now, with that said, this is when Midoriya would just go on saying that not only do I have apparently two quirks, but I thought I was born quirkless. Now, this information would surprise and get a lot of people in the stands talking, since... Well, the top student in UA didn't think he had a quirk? That's pretty surprising. Midoriya is simply just saying that he has an ability that is an enhancement quirk. Apparently, every day I stockpile power. Or energy. I've been working hard in training my whole life. And recently, or well, as of last year, almost... I've unlocked the ability. The power was flowing so much that, well, it's insane. Not only that, but it's so strong I can tear apart my body if I don't use it right. Now I have this ability. As he just gets Block Whip to go back into his hand. And he then just brings it down. Saying that he's not too sure why he's having these occurrences. But just know. If I manifest more quirks, 
then I will take down everybody in my path. And as you just point out to everyone, saying that if they don't try their hardest, then don't bother being here. And you might as well just leave now. Now, that information would actually surprise quite a lot of people, along with getting them cheering. Since they're basically told that if they aren't working hard, they need to leave UA. Somewhat annoying some people, as Monum and the guy in class on B would try and speak up saying that it doesn't matter. Hmm. Some 1A wannabe, or, well, up-class guy, wants to think that he's better than class 1B. Hmm. Well, I'll just have to prove him wrong and use his quirk against him. Ibarra basically creating a vine, and slapping Monomo across the face, telling him that that is not even what he said. He said that people need to work hard. Now, as they would be ready for the race, and things would be set in motion. However, things would begin to get a bit messy, and what I mean by messy is everyone's actually a bit more pumped up, and ready to run through. As soon as President Mike says, 3, 2, 1, begin, Todoroki would have blasted up his hand and create an ice wall, beginning to try and haul ass. As Bakugo, Midoriya, and quite a few other students, they would have been able to get through, Midoriya jumping upwards and smashing directly through the top portion of it, at about 30%, and beginning to run. Now, he would have quickly passed Hiroki, Todoroki stopping and throwing up his right arm, and sending a large, large wave of fire directly towards Deku. This actually catching him, covering Deku's entire body in ice, as people would be surprised to see him for minutes, before Deku would just turn on one for all up to around 50%, and then go a bit higher, his body beginning to heat up and actually start to course with more electricity as he would just throw his hands out as hard as he can, and send a bit of a shockwave around him, blowing away quite a lot of the other students, as he would rush forwards, and throw out his right hand. As soon as he throws it out, he would have thrown it directly at a robot's leg, Black Whip manifesting and immediately just shooting straight outwards, stabbing into and slicing it, beginning to wrap around the robots, and then Midori would have run past, would yank as hard as he can, tearing the robot's limb off. Now, this would have surprised quite a lot of people, along with the fact that Ida has just passed him. Kendo isn't too far behind. In fact, she's directly behind Bakugo. And those of them the those are the ones who are using their quirks are starting to catch up. As Ida would be well in a bit of trouble. Over with the minefield, or what was it, the rope area, that's beginning to get a bit more tricky. Midoriya running past him and just looking at Ida, before jumping as high as he can, and landing on the other side, Ida immediately just running across the ropes. Kendo not too far behind as Todoroki just begins to slide on them, and destroy the ones behind him meaning that other people in the classes would begin to try and find different ways around, fighting a bit and actually getting in a bit of trouble. Now, Midoriya would have just ran straight through the minefield, blasting everything away behind him. People just watching as he would just slow down and immediately just slide into the arena, and just throw up his left hand. Now, that would have mean Midoriya won the race, and a bit of people are surprised and cheering up for him, as shortly afterwards, Ida would come through. And he's a bit annoyed. He doesn't want to show off for several bursts yet, but he's probably going to have to in the next event just to keep up with this guy. Now, afterwards it would have been announced that Midoriya has 10 million points, 
And in third place, if anyone's wondering, I want to say it would be a tie between either Kendo, Bakugo, or Todoroki. Or, well, let's see. I want to say to that Kendo would come in. Because Todoroki and Bakugo would be fighting, and she would be able to run straight past them. The minefield, no longer a minefield. The two being too focused on each other and not paying attention to her. Anyways. Now, it is announced that Midori has 10 million points on his head. And Midoriya, he's not too worried about it. In fact, before the next event does start, before they have to go pick their teams, Todoroki would have tried pulling him aside. And ask him a question. If he is All Might's secret love child. To which he would have said no. He is not even related to All Might. Why do you ask? Him basically just saying that it's kind of odd. You say you were corkless, but at the same time, your abilities and your, well, the force you threw out the back of the USJ, it felt like one of All Might's punches. Hmm? Oh. It's an enhancement ability, dude. Besides, a shockwave is a shockwave, no matter who throws it. You really think that, oh hey. Midoriya bring his hands up, saying that this guy has a cork similar to the number one hero. Because the number one hero is a very strong ass guy. Yeah, you do, dude, you're not putting anything together. Midoriya tearing apart his entire theory. About him being All Might's secret love child along with explaining that his dad works overseas. Now, I just realized, after looking over the recording to make sure it's okay, that I said he blasted fire. He blasted ice. That is my bad. Anyways, now, Deku just asked Todoroki and explained to him about his dad and his mom, along with how his mom actually encouraged him to get more powerful. And a lot stronger. Because of that, he's the person he is today. And Todoroki would have been a bit angry. And, well, started explaining to Midoriya that he doesn't care. And, well, since you told me that, I should at least tell you as to why I don't use the other side. My father, he... Midoriya cutting off, saying that he gave you the fucking Zuko scar... Todoroki not sure what a Zuko is. <sighs> I really needed to just throw that in there. I thought it would be funny. Anyways. Now. Todoroki just go on explaining that whenever he was younger, his dad trained him. And tried to force him to be something that he's not. A weapon. Something that will take down All Might. One day, he drove his mother insane, and she poured boiling hot water onto his face. Midoriya kind of confused. Todoroki just stopping there before he does ask exactly how does that make the scar then. Him looking at Midoriya. Then Midoriya asking exactly how is it possible to burn your face if that's the fire side of your quirk. That part of you is heat resistant. Todoroki just stopping, not finishing the sentence. And Midori would just say that there's something you're not saying. Besides, if I meet you in the ring before the next event, and we do face off against each other, just know, I don't plan on holding back. I can tear you apart with one of my quirks. Hell. You only use that ice ability, I might be able to tear you apart with Black Whip. Or toss you out of the ring. Midoriya manifesting it. And it moving around along his arm. Midoriya just saying that if he truly believes that he could win with only half his power, well, tough shit. I'm going all out. So, your power is yours. Not your dumbass dad's. Not mine. Not your mom's. Or, well, fuck it, not anyone else's. So, just use the goddamn quirk, dude. Now, Midoriya would have 
walked away, and go to pick his team. His teammates are Kendo, Mei, and I want to say he would have been able to convince Tokoyami. Now, convincing Tokoyami wasn't actually that hard. Now, with Tokoyami on his team, that will be very easy. Since it's Kendo, Mei, Tokoyami, and Deku would become the writer. Just like in canon. Except this time, instead of tying it around his, well, his head, he would tie it around his neck. Since that's going to be a harder area to get to. If, well, he has it on his head, then someone can just run by and grab it, and pull it straight off. But on his neck, if he ties it a certain way, which would be cheating, he could basically keep it on, and they would basically just yank onto it and pull him. But he wouldn't do the whole cheating bullshit. In fact, he would just keep it fair. Tying it and flipping around the 10 million. Where they do begin, they would all begin to run. As soon as they are moving around and doing all this, Tokoyama would be able to start grabbing away at points, along with Midoriya actually jumping off of his team and beginning to bounce around the arena. Whenever he does come into contact with the Monomo guy's team, the guy would have created the solid air and directly stopped Midoriya, him throwing his legs and basically standing on it, and jumping off. The solid air breaking, which would then cause Mono's team to actually be taken aback. And Mono would try and reach out for Deku. And Deku would have gone to turn his leg and actually kick his fingers. He's not too sure what this guy's quirk is. He's from 1B, right? Hmm. Interesting. As he would be able to recover, being able to grab on a dark shadow and flip around, heading straight back in for his team. As he would come in and be able to grab at the actual bananas, kicking off this guy as the guy does touch Midori's arm. As soon as Midori does that, he would tie the he would tie the headbands around his own neck and begin to rearrange them. The same tactic Todoroki used. Now, the reason why he would rearrange them is because you don't really want to put the biggest points on first. Or, well, you could. It's a matter of deception. But Midori's not really thinking about this. Since as soon as he got them on, the guy from 1B would have thrown out his hand, expecting to be able to use one for all, and his hand would begin to start getting bigger and bigger before Black Whip manifests out of it and begins to freak out. Him watching this thing just begins to cover his entire arm, and begins to shoot out in multiple different directions, some teams actually getting out, as a hero would have had to intervene and actually stop this from happening. Now, with that being said, this is whenever Ida's team with, I believe, Todoroki, would be coming in, being able to form an ISR on Deku's team and cage them in. Bakugo's team rushing in that direction too. He is pissed off because he keeps getting surpassed by the shitty nerd. Now, with that being said, this is whenever Todoroki's team would have come in, Ida using their simple burst and telling everyone to hang on. As soon as that happens, Todoroki's team would come in and grab away at Deku's headband. As soon as they do yank it off, Midori would have thrown up his, his hand backwards and reach out Black Whip, being able to cut off two of Todoroki's teams. Now, Todoroki would have watched as, well, the person behind him or underneath him, directly behind Ida, I don't remember which one it was, would basically reach out and try and grab them. Deku being able to wrap his hand around a red lip, wrap Black Whip around a headband, and yank it in. Todoroki, he grabbed a 150 headband, while Midoriya grabbed somewhere around 520. Meaning that Todoroki's team just lost a lot of points. Along with Bakugo's team trying to rush in and do the same strategy. 
Bakugo flying in midair and trying to actually fight with Todoroki, or Deku. Deku leaping off of his own team this time and actually coming in. Being able to sock Bakugo across the face and then throw out his left hand. Grabbing away at his headband as he tries to pull. Bakugo bringing his hand back up and turning it, blasting away directly into Midoriya's chest. Midoriya being sent flying because of the force. As soon as that does, that does happen though, Tokuyami, Black, Blip, Black Whip, Dark Shadow would have tried throwing out his hand. And Deku would just throw up Black Whip, wrapping around it and actually wheeling himself in. He almost hit the ground. That was a bit too much. Now, after that does happen, it will be announced that the event is ending. Midori's team still on top, with above 10 million points, since they were being more offensive. Now, with that being said, I do believe I should end the video here. Since I do go into the sports festival right now, I might get interrupted. And it will not be as intense as I want it to be. Now, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And have an amazing day.